All right, welcome to um, 1.2, General Approach for Solving Diffusion Problems. Uh, we're going to take a look at the control volume method today. So our objectives for, the, for today are to develop the uh, general approach, develop the control volume method, and we'll use that throughout diffusion, uh, the mass transport, and we'll move, use it also in thermal and in fluids. So we're going to take a look at that. And we're also going to demonstrate when we take a look at the one-dimensional diffusion through a planar membrane case. This is the example problem in the text uh, of hydrogen diffusing through palladium. We're going to take a look at that case using the general method and show that indeed the concentration gradient is linear. So right now we use fixed first law to solve that case but this came with the assumption that the concentration was linear, which we were just given and told. And so we're going to go ahead and show that that is indeed true. Right? Now this linear concentration gradient allows you to take Fick's first law and change dc dx into a delta c delta x. Right? Well, we're looking at the uh, high pressure concentration, the low pressure concentration, and then the film thickness for the delta x. So our general approach uh, has eight steps and we'll go through all of these. In this video, we're gonna take a look at step one and then we'll continue on in, in other short videos and look through each of these processes. So first thing we do, uh, like any good problem, is we go ahead and sketch and we make observations. And so in this case, um, what we're assuming is that we've got this uh, planar membrane, so we're in a rectangular coordinate system. Okay, we're going to have to modify this approach when we look at uh, tubes and pipes when we're in cylindrical coordinate system. But we're in a rectangular coordinate system, Cartesian system, and we're going to assume that the film thickness for this problem is uh, small relative to the overall size of the film. And so what that means is I don't have to worry about edge effects, the result for the concentration through this film is going to be dominated by moving through from face to face. So I can just take a look at that problem then in one dimension and just look at the film, uh, the membrane thickness uh, throughout this direction here. And this membrane is going to have a dimension delta, and that's what's shown here. So we're going to take a look a little closer at this. Now, our control volume is just considered a cubical volume okay, that exists in that, that one dimensional view of our solid. And so we'll break our solid up into these cubical volumes. Uh, the surfaces always end up with half of a volume and we'll talk a bit about that later. It's not really important for what we're doing right now. But in the center of this film, at some position, we're going to have a volume element. And what we'd like to do is do a mass balance for how much mass is entering and leaving this volume. And that's going to depend on a flux. It's going to depend on concentrations around this element. And that will help us uh, solve the diffusion problem. So right now what we want to do is just define our variables. So this cubical element exists at some position x, okay, and it's arbitrary, and it has a length, an edge length here of delta x, right? So the other face here is at position x plus delta x. And then this face here at position x, we have a flux coming in of mass, Okay, this flux is moving in the x direction, that's the first x here. And at face x plus delta x, we have the flux moving out of the face. And again, that's a flux in the x direction. Now these two fluxes can be different from each other. Okay? And so we denote that by saying where we evaluate or are measuring this flux j sub x. So here, all right, we've got this line and then this sub x. This means that we're evaluating this at some position x. And then this face is a flux of x 
and then we're evaluating that at position x plus delta x. Okay, so that's what this notation is, is referring to. The value of the flux at x, the value of the flux at x plus delta x. And we're going to assume that our x direction is always pointing to the right as positive, and so these arrows just represent the direction of the flux in terms of our math, uh, the mathematics of it, not in terms of the direction they really move. That'll get determined when we solve the problem. Okay, so in the setup, we always point them just like that, in and out okay, of our control volume. All right, next time we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start looking at how much mass is in here based on these fluxes. Okay, remember flux, again, is the amount of something, grams, kilograms, say, or atoms, that's moving through a given surface, right, per given time. So kilogram per meter squared per second, for example.